bitches. Broadcast with Amanda, Shandy, and Colleen. My name is Colleen. My name is Amanda. And I'm Shandy. Welcome to the show, everybody. This is Season 6, Episode 28, Episode number 253. How's it going? Delightful. Good. Woohoo! Good, good. We are joined uh, by the Hangout Level patrons, um, who I think is just Matt tonight, uh, who has spoken up at least. So, hello, Matt. Thank you for joining us. Hello. Yay. If you would like to join us once a month, um, go to patreon.com slash Jack and become a Hangout Level patron if you want to. Yay. <laughs> We're super fun. <laughs> There's a, Thank you. <laughs> we just recorded our um, monthly bonus show <laughs> for the, uh, the $5 level or more patrons. And there's a lot that happens that gets cut out that, you know, well... People like Matt know about. <laughs> I don't yep. know. Yep. If- they were real crop of doozies, this one. It was, it was, a, it was a, good, a good collection. Really repre- representational of uh, who we are as podcasters <laughs> and as humans. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, there was one, and I uh, ended up cutting it out because it wasn't funny, but it was me telling Jay when he joined on the live Christmas one. I was like, yeah, last that was last night. We talked about my two favorite topics, Christmas movies and poop. <laughs> <laughs> Disagree. Think that's funny. I laughed. There go. Funny. Same. Well, see, the yeah. funny part was in the middle of the clip. It ended kind of like, eh, like, mom, mom, mom. So I was like, eh, but I should have put it in. Maybe next time. Eh, that's what she said. Um, Let the people decide. <laughs> I guess I could still go back. It's literally from the last episode that we did, so I know where it is. Um, anyway, how's it going? Um, how was everybody's weeks, weekends? We're recording on a Wednesday instead of a Thursday. I mean, instead of a Tuesday. Right. Yeah. Good <laughs> yeah, that's... <laughs> I'm a little Everything's... thrown off. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's good, though. I, my... Um... I'm not in as much pain this week from running as I was last week. And Yay. I started, I went back to physical therapy on Tuesday. What, what? Oh, good. good. Yeah. Yes. And I like my therapist and I'm very excited about that. That's awesome. awesome. Yeah. For your, for your hip, right? Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. That's, that's pers- a part of hip. the body. I feel like. Yes. What yes, kind indeed. of stretches and stuff do they do for you? Cause I've had like, pretty bad hip pain for the last week so i mean i don't know if like we have the same stuff like mine is i think mine is a lot of like weakness in the muscles all around there Hmm. so um she's having me do a bunch of things uh including like you know bridges different things for like core strength like planks uh all the stuff that i should be doing anyway but just am not um but it's great when you have somebody like a professional actually telling you so i don't know i don't know if it would be the same stuff for you or not depending on what your actual issue is she's not really having me do like stuff that's like specifically really like focusing on the hips because it's just it's kind of like everything around there that's Mm, gotcha it's making me yeah yeah. okay i was just curious because i've never really had hip pain and for the last week Mm. i it's it's been like really uncomfortable and like that mermaid stretch, you know, the one where you like go like this and like, you know, go over. That's kind of helped it a little mm. bit. But mm. like with your, your your legs out in mm-hmm. front of you and you yeah, and you go like one, one side, side and then, yeah. Like you're holding the one where it's like you're holding a big beach ball overhead and you're tilting it to one side and you're tilting it like that. I've never heard it with beach ball. I've always like, I don't know, I learned it from Pilates. So she would be like, sit like a mermaid and then like go like this. Huh. And then, I've never heard it called a mermaid stretch, but I really like that. I also yeah. don't know very many mermaids, so. <laughs> <laughs> there is that. Uh, Ro has joined us. Hello, Ro. Hi, Ro. Hey, hey. How are you, Amanda? <laughs> good, good. Trying hard to work out. I've been trying to do um, 
yoga with Adrian's 30 day yoga <gasps> challenge. Same. What day are you on? <laughs> day 12. Dude, I'm on day five. <laughs> it got me beat. It's not every day, but my goal was really just to get into some yeah. kind of routine. Yeah. You know, so this is like, cause my body, it, I, my body does feel like it's still healing. Like my back is still so jacked up. Yeah. I think they put in my epidural wrong. Cause I, st- I feel like I've had a pinched nerve in my back all year Aww. and I just, I can't, it doesn't unpinch. It's just, it's awful. Do you front wear a lot? Do I front wear? Yeah. Like, as- like the baby carrier? Not as much as I thought I would be, mainly okay. because the summer and it was too hot and she didn't – she's a sweaty baby and didn't want to be that close to me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, she knows what she wants and does Okay, because um, I know that front wearing sometimes can – because your, your posture, everything changes because you're trying to adjust, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, you know, we, we, we wear fairly regularly. Okay. Because you asked me before we started recording, like, when does the sleep stabilize? And I said never. But I will say that once they can walk, the back pain gets better. That is good. Oh, Because I used to have perpetual just, like, shoulder. Because I, I, for some reason, I always carry on my right hip and my right side. Um, Mm. And I used to just perpetually have a sore, not perpetually, but, like, get, like, just tense muscles from carrying, especially Mm. the heavier they got. But... It, it does get much better once they can walk on their own places. <laughs> That's good to know. I feel like we're 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 crawling. Yeah. And she's pulling herself to standing. She was standing by herself this evening, not realizing that's what she was doing. Like Yay. she was up on our like ottoman and then she just kind of leaned back and was just kind of standing there and I'm like <gasps> and she didn't even know what she was doing. She's like dun, 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 dun. Love that. Wow. Yeah. That's so I, mark my words, I think she will be taking steps before her first birthday to go with her mouthful of teeth that she will have. <laughs> Excellent. Awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> but otherwise we're we're fine. Um I had a friend come up to visit uh that wasn't uh Julia came came oh, to visit fun. this weekend just kind of spur of the moment and it was really it was really nice cuz I haven't nice. been out at all. <laughs> so it was nice to like. Did she stay with you guys? No, no. Her husband was already coming into the city for something else. Okay. It was like, well, why don't you just come? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> why don't you just join him and come play sense. with him. <laughs> so um, her and another one of our good girlfriends, we all went out to like an early bird dinner, which I'm now like, this is the way to, to go out. It is. <laughs> we met for dinner at like four o'clock. It was great. <laughs> Because it was also the first time that I've dined indoors nice. since the pandemic began. Wow. And because there was literally no one else in the restaurant. I actually felt comfortable. It wasn't yeah. until we were sort of finishing up like yeah. closer to like 6.30 or so that it was like, oh, okay. You guys right, stay there right. for two and a half hours? I think so. Oh, I don't know. What is incredible. what is time anymore? <laughs> it could have been 45 minutes. Again, I don't go out anymore. <laughs> Notice so how the like, four o'clock didn't phase me. <laughs> I was like, oh my God. Two glasses of wine and they were very generous poor. So it must have been two hours. I couldn't have downed all that in like in an hour. So. Oh my God. Well, that's was, awesome. It was, yeah, it was very nice. Um, we're supposed to go see a Broadway show this weekend that we rescheduled from when we were supposed to go see it yeah. uh, because of COVID. And now apparently we're supposed to get a bomb cyclone. Yes. So oh my might God. Not to get rescheduled again. Wait, wait, don't tell me. I uh, Shoot, you told us what it was. What does it start with? Give me the first letter. Give me the first letter. Oh, sorry. I suppose the humming isn't going to help. We're going to see company. Company, that's right. I was like, I, I knew it started with a C. And I was like, circus? No, that's not a show. got off of the plane. <laughs> well, I'm sorry. Hopefully the bomb cyclone holds off long enough. Meanwhile, Big Sur is on fire here. Oh, I saw so, that. Oh, my God. And it's a big fire. I did not see that. It's not a little fire. I was too busy fire. stressing about my own life. And <laughs> <laughs> Mother Nature is keeping me from Broadway, and I'm really not okay with it. <laughs> Mother Nature kept me from hiking on Big Sur last weekend. Good day. It's fucking January. Yeah, that's rough. <sighs> Hashtag this is climate change. Mm. I did see something today. Um, a friend of mine shared uh, an ins- Instagram account that, like, it's an it's, I, I wish I knew what it was, and maybe I'll go look it up at the break, but it's like, um, you know, an environmental 
account and it was posting like happy tuesday here's some good things that happened and one of them is the biden administration is giving like i'm not even gonna say how much money because it's probably gonna be wrong to help ensure that we prepare for like fire seasons better by doing like preparedness like you know like pre-burns and things to help um, bring the forests back and like giving them more protection. For- See, that's the kind of stuff that I wish that was covered more instead of, you know, yeah. yeah. Dumb it things. is nice to. I'm going to yeah. find that account and get the actual info on it. Y'all can talk amongst yourself. Yeah, Here's absolutely. Um, hey, in other, I guess, I, I wasn't going to go there, but I guess in other Biden news, we get a new Supreme Court justice. Yeah. We get a new Supreme Court justice. Breyer's retiring. Wait, how, Justice Breyer is retiring. How did this, when did this so happen? It's still Literally be today. This today. happened like hours ago, like yeah. just in time for the evening news cycle. <laughs> it, was, it was like this morning or something, or this afternoon, yeah. Yeah, Breyer's retiring, so the court's still going to be six to three, but oh, yeah, at least we so. might get somebody who might not like, you know, yep, die there tomorrow. It is. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> so that's exciting. Um, that's all love that the news is saying that's like, oh, you know, we'll give him his first appointment to the Supreme Court. It's like, oh, the rate he's going, he's just going to get the one, guys. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's actually... Get the one. Let's not count our chickens before they're hatched. I, I don't know. I mean, Clarence Thomas is pretty mm-hmm. fucking old. So is Alito. Mm-hmm. I, I just, I don't, I don't understand why the devil won't come for them like he came for Scalia. Because <laughs> the world is an unfair place. <laughs> but I did find that account. So the account, the Instagram account is called Future Earth. Future Earth, okay. Future Earth, and headline, U.S. announces plan to prevent catastrophic wildfires. The goal is to make forests more resilient and fire adaptive. The new plan will use thinning and intentional burning to restore forests to conditions closer to what existed in the past when fire was a regular part of the forest Mm -hmm. life cycle. Awesome. I'll put it in the show notes, too, for anybody who might not be at a place that they can stop and look it up. Yes, and they linked that from uh, AP News. Awesome. There is actually an account on Twitter and it's called something like what's what Biden's done. And it like highlights all the little things that you don't hear about it. Like, uh, yeah, sometimes we just need to know the earth isn't like beyond hope that sometimes there's good things. Yeah, it's what four six has done the Twitter account. It only has thirty two thousand thirty two and a half thousand followers. So it's not very big in Twitter terms, but like it just highlights just the different things that have happened over the last year. And um, it finds things that aren't talked about. Like today, he signed an executive order to make sexual harassment an offense under the Uniform Military Code of Justice and strengthen the military's response against domestic violence and revenge revenge porn. I had heard that. CBS News had that in their show tonight. Nice. See, I had not heard that. But that's they've been doing like a lot of reporting on harassment in the military and like women in the military and that's been like a real a real yeah. thing that they've been uh, very focused on yeah does anyone else have anything oh i do have one more good news from uh, from this uh future earth account rare and pristine coral reef found off tahiti coast the reef was thought to be one of the largest found in such depth at such depth and seems untouched by climate change or human activities. No. Research is planned to understand the reef's resilience and role in the ocean ecosystem. So when all when all you're hearing about reefs dying, it's nice to hear they found a new one that is <laughs> really strong. <laughs> that just made me feel really good. Yeah. Hey, speaking of the I don't know, while we're on the subject of politics. Um, did you hear that Minnie Mouse has been, uh, for Women's History Month or whatever, she's going to wear a pantsuit? No, oh, but I sort of love that. that. Yeah. It's purple uh, with polka dots, and uh, predictably right. Fox News has lost their fucking shit. Uh, <laughs> I mean, with the whole like thing about the M&Ms. What, like what Candace, is their beef about the M&Ms? <laughs> oh, oh my God. So Tucker Carlson's upset that he can't jerk jerk it to the green M&M anymore because she's wearing sneakers instead of heels to which I say who the fuck cares was anybody really thinking about the green M&M anyway like nobody cared right. However, they're animated M&M's right. she, <laughs> and, <laughs> and also if I, I, I would have just put her in like ballet flats because that's like so much more in anyway um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> regarding Mickey, Minnie Mouse's new outfit 
Candace Owens was literally on Fox News tonight, and she said they're trying to destroy fabrics of our society because society's determined by whether or not Minnie Mouse is in a dress. <laughs> somebody, and probably maybe somebody already has, but somebody should make, like, compile a list of the, like, this level of bullshit that conservatives care about because it is nuts. It is just so much. It is nuts. It is nuts. Well, the other newest thing that's kind of going on, and I'm sorry, Amanda, did I interrupt you? Like, did you have, like, I, I'm i sorry, because I kind of changed the subject a little No, I just wanted a clarification on the Eminem thing. Oh. Uh, yeah, while we were talking about crazy things that Fox News was mad about, <laughs> I just wanted I just wanted a little information is all. They're mad that, yeah, so the fabric of this society was essentially uh, the green M&M having stilettos and Minnie Mouse wearing a dress. And, yeah, Tucker is very mad. Um, you know, the important stuff. The very important stuff. The important stuff. Um, it's, right, it's right up there with critical race theory. Mm-hmm. Right. It's right, you know, the, mm-hmm. the fabric of our society, guys. It's just falling. I mean, again, like, how is how is uh, Tucker going to get off? Like, uh, Anyway, it was the stupidest thing. If you watch his clip, he's just like, and she's not sexy anymore. And it's like, she never you're talking about a fucking drag candy. <laughs> candy. And not that kind of candy. And not that kind of candy. It's a cartoon, man. Wow. So, so ridiculous. So ridiculous. Oh, uh, two things. Oh, I guess. Does he realize she actually doesn't have legs? Like M&Ms don't have feet. Does he not eat the green M&M or does he eat it first and like savor it with his tongue? Because he's like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> he probably Grand does. scheme of things to be mad about. He probably does. I don't think he now... would be the kind of person that would savor it with his tongue. He's probably t- too selfish. No. <laughs> I wonder if now he has to remove all the green M&Ms because they're just not good enough for him to eat anymore. They're not sexy enough. <laughs> but then what does it mean that he was eating the boy (gasps) m&ms oh my god just saying oh my god it's it's, uh, the right is just gonna cancel m&ms altogether i know oh man i wonder what m&ms they're lost because i'll take all of them all of them (laughs) all of them (laughs) the very fabric of society it's just falling down we're in the end times now Uh, (laughs) anyway uh, oh, 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 I, I didn't mention. Uh, so since we recorded last, Jay and Zachary have COVID. So, right. Ooh, right. That's been How a did thing. we give me that lead? So essentially last week, uh, okay, so last Wednesday, Jay woke up and he was like, I am so tired. I, you know, I just feel achy. Was it was it Wednesday? Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm mixed up with my dates, so disregard but last week one day he woke up he said he was very just achy and tired and cranky but he also said that he had been feeling kind of like under a lot of pressure at work and january depression and blah 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 and so he was like i'm probably just like you know a little bit depressed and i was like okay and then he found out that he um and then he said he had a slight throat ache and then he found out that same day a little bit later that he had been exposed to covid um on saturday uh, the previous Saturday Um, and we had gone to Greensboro which is kind of hicky not rednecky but let's just say we went to see monster trucks in Greensboro and we thought it was going to be like a 90-10 situation (laughs) for masks and vaccines and it was like a 50-50 situation for masks so like you know Mm. it was a little bit better than we thought but you know it's a very conservative crowd plus Mm. monster trucks Mm. you know it's whatever yeah so Um, We don't know if he got it there or if he got it when he went to see it. He was talking to a friend with a mask on for about 30 minutes in a store immediately after, like right after that. So, And then that friend's the one that tested positive. So we don't know if he got it from there or, or, or just someplace in general, randomly, right? We do our errands every, every uh, Saturday. So who knows, or Sunday rather, who knows if he got it from somebody, right? Random person at Costco. So who knows? Um, so that was that was the middle of the week. So we did the um, PCR. We made an appointment, or you know, we don't have. They say you have to make the appointment for the PCR test, but I don't know. They don't. They, you get the QR code. They say to hold it out. Nobody's once checked my QR code. Is what I'm trying to say. Um, <laughs> but 
there was a different lab than that usually does it. And the lab that usually does it gets the results back, you know, within six hours. It's awesome. Like, they've been doing it since the beginning. They got this shit down, like, pack. Even, like, in December when, you know, the line was 45 minutes long that we waited in it. Like, it was still back. We got it at, what did I say, like, 2 o'clock, 2.30. And we got our results back at, like, 6.45. So, um, Mm -hmm. that night he started to feel, like, even worse and we hadn't gotten the results back. And I was like, dude, you totally have COVID. <laughs> like, you know, it's clearly it's mild. But like, if you feel like crappy and you are around somebody with COVID, you probably totally have COVID. So yeah. the next day I was able to get rapid tests and his rapid test. And in the next day he felt even like was the day that he felt like the worst. And I was able to get a rapid test and, um, you know, he tested positive. I tested negative, which I was super nervous. Like, I thought for sure. I was like, oh, God. <laughs> so anyway, uh, Zach, we had dropped Alex off on Thursday morning at Jack and Cindy's. So before Jay's positive test, but after he had taken the the one the night before. And Jack dropped him off on Friday afternoon because it was supposed to snow. And, um, uh, you know, I was like, Daddy has COVID. Like, let's... Uh, we're going to go straight in the car and we're going to run some errands now just in case, like, you know, the rest of us <laughs> test positive this weekend and we're oh, SOL God. and we have no groceries. <laughs> Mommy's still po- Mommy's still that negative. That is really so thinking ahead. We're going. Yeah. So, like, you know, we did our, our grocery runs because I was just like, there's no way we're going out this weekend, especially once they're around Jay now. So, anyway, he, uh, the next day on Saturday, Cindy tests positive. Oh, so, going back. Uh, Zachary is coughing a little bit in the car and I don't really think anything of it because I'm thinking that, you know, he's been fine all week. And then he tells me that he had um, allergies all week when he was there and Gigi gave him Zyrtec all week and he had a stuffy nose and a cough. And I'm like thinking, oh, okay, because I wasn't like associating it with like Jay being sick because they hadn't really been in contact when Jay was symptomatic. Right. Mm. And I don't think anything of it. And then Jay's mom tested positive on Saturday. His nephew tested positive on Sunday. And he had had he had had a fever for several days and was sick. And Jack babysits him, so he was there with Zach all week. So what I'm thinking now, and then, oh, everybody else tested positive yesterday. Like between Monday and yesterday, except Jack. So Alex, Jack, and I, and I've tested like multiple times. <laughs> We're the last ones. And Jack, too. Jack took, like, three tests in, like, a day or whatever. I'm sure he told the story in the real <laughs> guest list. Like, he sure. was like, everybody else around me is positive. Surely, like, I'm, I got the bad luck. I can't be the one that's, you know, that's so negative. Um, yeah, we're the last ones standing, which I don't know how. But it's good because everybody can go back to school tomorrow, which is great because we all need to go back to school tomorrow. <laughs> 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 we all need to go back. Um, so wait, how do you, who, what do you think the... So here's what I think happened. I think that either Jay or Zach, but the most likely candidate is probably Zach. Um, even though his family is calling Jay the super spreader. I think Zach and Jay came in contact with it on Saturday somewhere. Whether it was Jay at the toy store with his friend, or they both had their masks down to eat um, like chicken fingers or something at monster trucks. And so whether it was there or, you know, they went to the restroom and came in contact it, somebody came in contact it on Saturday is my best guess. And I think that whether Jay gave it to Zach or Zach and Jay both had it simultaneously, they brought it to Jack and Cindy's house. And then because mm-hmm. all they babysit all the grandkids and everybody's there, I think that they just all spread it around and got sick because they're all positive <laughs> like <laughs> so anyway you know we might have been the super spreaders <laughs> what i'm going at well, i feel you tried to be as careful as you could you I were working with the incomplete information <laughs> <laughs> i feel really bad yeah. about that um but again i mean but hayden who is jay's nephew or i guess my nephew too he's two he was at monster trucks with us too and he wasn't really wearing his mask so i mean the three of them but but he didn't show symptoms until i think he had a fever on friday or saturday so his was was later than theirs which is why Mm. i'm thinking maybe you know i don't know but all i know is um everybody's sick and uh except for me and jack and alex (laughs) 
But couldn't have, so he's still, so if he's two, he's clearly not vaccinated because he can't be. He can't be now. So, and isn't it true that if you, if you are vaccinated now, Omicron, it, the symptoms show up sooner, but since he's not vaccinated, then maybe it took, like, does that, maybe. is that correct? Maybe. And is that what I'm remembering having read? Jay, <laughs> anyway. thinks, Jay thinks that, because I left at 930 in the morning to do my geocaching thing on Monday, and Jay thinks that Zach was coughing before they left there that afternoon, but he can't remember. And he said that he thought he gave him Zyrtec before he left, but like, I know, I know that Zach was not coughing the mor- in that in, during in the morning before he left. Like, because I would have said something, and I, I, I know he wasn't coughing. So, I think he might be misremembering because there was another time where we were looking for the allergy medicine, not even the Zyrtec, because he was coughing a bit. And I feel like he's misremembering things. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I mean, it's been over a week at this point. Anyway, so everybody's feeling, in my household, it's feeling much better. Jay was only not, fe- he was feeling crappy. He said the booster was much, much worse. Um, Crazy. Huh. Yeah. Yay, vaccines. Yeah. Hashtag man. team science. Yeah. So vaccines are amazing. He feels good. Um, Zachary, again, just thought he had allergies. By the, I, and no. honestly, the only time I heard Zach cough was in the car on Friday, like, I heard him cough maybe once yesterday morning or Monday morning. Like it wasn't like he's he's been fine since he came home. Not a stuffy nose, not anything. So he's good. I think he could have gone to school on Tuesday when they went back, but because we didn't test him until the weekend, because once Cindy was positive, I was like, well, you guys slept with Gigi in her bed on Thursday, so <laughs> you probably both have COVID. And Zachary <laughs> volunteered to go first. And when his was positive, he was shocked. He was just like, I was like, because it didn't show, because with Jay, Jay's little lion thing showed up right away. Uh-huh. It was like mm-hmm. instant. And with Zach's, it didn't show up right away. I was like, oh, I think oh. you're good, Zach. And then I was like, oh, shit. No. He's like, just I have COVID, don't I? And I was like, you do, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> no. You really do have to wait 15 minutes. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was probably about 40 seconds before it showed up. But like Jay's yeah. again was like instant. Um, yeah. And then Zach and mine just never did. I still think Zach had COVID over Christmas. I mean, Alex did, and I slept with him for three nights straight in his bed. I think I was exposed then, and whether or not I had it, but never showed mm-hmm. symptoms and didn't yeah. think to test. Because oh, we did, we did get tested. We all got PCR tests, and he, we both did rapids, and they were all negative. But I still like think that he had to have had it because he had a fever, cough. He kept saying his brain was on fire, like he had a headache. <laughs> well, anyway. I mean, he could have just had, you know, another seasonal crud. He could. And that's what we assumed it was at the time. But, like, yeah. I don't know. Why else would we not have it now? Uh, yeah. No, that, yeah. Would, that would also make sense. Yeah. Anyway. Um, yeah. That's been <laughs> my exciting week since we last recorded. Mm-hmm. Thank goodness we only had to isolate for five days so my yeah. last, so what, Jay's was what, Thursday? So I basically spent the last couple of days, the only time I really left the house was to go to Walgreens to buy more rapid tests. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and you're lucky that you could even do that. Exactly. Well, because I didn't want to be that asshole that bought like a huge bunch at a time. So I was like, well, you know. Because um, the first time I was like, well, the kids aren't even home. So like, you know, I'll just get it for us and, you know, deal with it then. But thankfully, Walgreens uh, has the two different tests and they've got plenty in stock. So I think it's because everybody bought them out already back in December. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't even think you can get tests in New York City anymore. By the by, still waiting for the results of our PCR tests. Oh my God. I don't oh my God. think we're getting them back. Would no. you like me to mail you some rapids so you just have them? Daniel's parents did that. Okay, we're cool. St- we're stuck. <laughs> Don't worry. We have our ways. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Also, Daniel's very good about, like, some of the local pharmacies will have, like, a sign outside the door if they have tests. So he'll just, like, go in and buy a couple. That's good. So we, we have a little stockpile. Okay. Nice. Um, <laughs> It's kind of <laughs> gross, but uh, I don't know which ones you have. but the, I don't they, either. So they look like pregnancy tests, right? And the, there's the one of them, the buy next one, where you put the thing up your nose and then you like slip it in and like the Q-tip, like it takes it from the Q-tip. And then there's mm-hmm. another one, um, and I can't remember what it's called, but like you have to like 
you put it up there for like 18 seconds or 15 seconds on each side and then you swish it and you swirl it and like it's in there for like you know a good like minute like because then you squeeze mm-hmm. it and you have to squeeze the yeah. dropper as yeah, you take yeah, yeah. it out oh my gosh it's so complicated it's so disgusting. People do at home. it's so gross and then you have to like put the dropper into the thing to like you know do the the test and Jay and I left our, our tests, like, after we did it out on the table for, like, three days. And I was like, we have left, we have exposed open COVID in the living room, like a Petri dish. We should probably throw these out, because this is pretty gross. <laughs> anyway, that's it. As usual, I talked for way too long. <laughs> uh, Rose said that they gave that one to them at school. I think that one's more accurate, actually, because it, like, really makes you get that shit going. I mean, good God. It's like all those hoops you're jumping through. If it's not more accurate, then what is its point? <laughs> when we did it, we literally held the instructions out, like, up like this and read it to each other. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like a treasure a of, Yeah, it was like, now swirl it for 30 seconds. Now swish it up like this. Now make sure you squeeze the tip out. Uh-huh. And make sure it's facing the westernmost window in your house. <laughs> so many times. Turn around clockwise four times. Yeah, one of the ones that we used um, several times in France was like that, or like variations thereof. Um, but for some reason, the instructions were in German. I think it must be like a, you know, oh, a German them company. running out and like getting the ones. And it's just like, wow, well. So we know we knew what to do, and there were people, you know, we could explain it to Frank's parents and stuff. But like, what do you do? And there, somebody brought it up. I can't remember where I saw this, but it's a really good point. Like, there's nothing if you're like if if you can't see, then like you can't take a COVID test. Like, what? <laughs> there's just like no alternative for yeah, like without help. A uh, different kind of yeah, something that might. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Matt says, I just want to say next week's that's what she said will be very interesting. I know I thought about that. I chose my I words very carefully. <laughs> <laughs> um, while we were home, though, um, I mentioned this on the bonus show, but we watched um, Peacemaker on HBO Max, which is the um, John Cena-led um, sequel to the Suicide Squad movies. Um I recommend it. It's very good. Check it out. I don't think you need to have seen the movies. And I honestly, I really didn't like either movie, and I really like the show. So it's it's interesting. Um, and the other uh, thing that we started was Search Party. Have you guys heard of Search Party? I have heard so much about mm-hmm. Search Party, and I have mm-hmm. just not gotten around to watching it. It's in its last season, right? I think so. We, we're or in the it just of, ended. We're in the middle of the second season. Nice. Where is it? Where is it available? I think it's HBO Max as well. It has um, uh, maybe from Arrested right. Development in it. Oh. yeah. Like critics love it. It's supposed to be like this really. It's pretty fun, good. Like weird cult thing. It is. It's it's um you know one of those like concept driven shows um mm. where each f- uh, season has like one storyline that it kind of focuses on um but it is very like quirky and weird and psychological it's a psychological thriller but so far it's not too much of a mind fuck if that makes sense okay like yeah, that, it's kind of it's supposed to be kind of funny right it's like yes. it's like dark humor yes because the supporting characters are are pretty good too everybody does a really great job like there's a lot of chemistry yeah i i i i would recommend it as well i think it's really fun nice uh, yeah i will have to check it out yeah i'll let you know i heard that some of the some of the seasons do get a little bit darker in terms of like being more psychological thrillery, um, mm-hmm. but the first season is a pretty easy watch. Nice, I, I, yeah. I feel like I'm thinning out my list of things to watch, so mm. I feel like I I could I could add some more. Yeah, uh, Matt said that he heard heard he heard it gets nuts in the end. That's what I saw on Twitter too. That's why I actually decided to watch it. I was like, "Ooh, there's a show that gets like, you know, good crazy. I guess I need to to start watching this." <laughs> mm, nice. Nice. So. Yeah, we watched uh The Gilded Age last oh, night. Oh, I want to oh. start that. I'm into it. I'm into it. You know, it's like a PBS show that like PBS couldn't afford. Oh. <laughs> what is it on? <laughs> it's on HBO. Okay. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, that's right. It's, it is literally, it's like, it's American Downton Abbey. And like, I'm, it's like J- Julian Fellow. So it's like, you know, the same creator. And like, I'm just, I'm just waiting for like the Downton Easter eggs. <laughs> you know, there's characters and like, oh, that's like the O'Brien character. And like, oh, Ruff. that's like the... The Maggie Smith character. (laughs) (laughs) But yeah, is it a great show? No. Will I keep watching it? Absolutely. (laughs) Ro gives it a mess. You're beautiful. Like it's it's so like it's just so extra. Like I I will watch it. Nice. Yeah, I definitely want to watch that. Um also Euphoria is back, so I've been watching that. I'm so excited to watch it. <laughs> yeah, we were talking about it last night when we uh, turned on Search Party and Euphoria had an ad. I was like, we really need nice. to get on this show. Yeah, the first three episodes are out. Nice of season two, right? Yep. Cool. But if you didn't watch the like the the two episode sort of like interlude between season one and season two, you really should. It's very good. Okay. Mm-hmm. Noted. Matt said on the subject of HBO Sunday Nights, Righteous Gemstones. What's that about? Oh, right. Daniel watched that. It's like mm-hmm. um, Danny McBride and Don Gold- um, Goldman. No, Goodman. Don Goodman. Ah. Um, and somebody else. Oh, um, the guy from Workaholics and um, Pitch Perfect. It's about a mega church. I hmm. feel like I've. Okay, hold on. Righteous Gemstones. Got it. Interesting. Yeah. Danny McBride, yeah, you know. Adam Devine, John Goodman, Cassidy Freeman, Edie Patterson, Tony Cavallero. Oh, and Walter Goggins from, um, uh, what? Yeah, that guy. He's like in everything. Yeah, but he's from um, Justified. Ah, didn't and, and the unicorn. Cool. <laughs> yeah, it's, 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 uh, yeah, I think it's like, it's like a dark comedy about a, yeah, they're like a. A family that started this mega church, and I think there's a murder involved. Like, it, I would like pop in sometimes while Daniel's watching, and I'm just like, oh, I don't know if this is for me. Um, Matt said that Walter Goggins is awesome as Uncle Baby Billy. Um, and then one last announcement before we move on: uh, Real Weird Sisters next week. So please Yay. send us your feedback for Alice and Martha, Yay. Uh, including any like Valentine's Day e feedback. We would love Ooh. that. So ooh, ooh, ooh. hit us up. The broadcasters three at gmail.com or three three one two seven six two three seven three. Um moving on real quick, I have decided that in season six I would love to more frequently than I used to feature an I am I the asshole segment. Okay. Here for it. Love it. Let's All right. it. So yeah. here's the first one. This uh, here's the one I've selected for this week. And it's, uh, am I the asshole for laughing hysterically after a date kept insisting to me that women have periods from their butt? <laughs> no. <laughs> hmm. What? Where is date getting their information? I, I feel like I want to know more about this. Okay. And why is date trying to mansplain periods? With right. If you don't get one, you you can't be an expert on it. So here we go. <laughs> Uh, there was this guy, 22 male, who I, 20 female, have gone on a few dates with in the past couple of months. He's nice, and so far we've only progressed to going on public dates. But about a week ago, we finally decided to have a nice date at my place. Since it was going to be at my place, I let him know before, before that that I was on my period because I wasn't sure what expectations he had or where his boundaries were yet. And we agreed to... Just have a nice takeout dinner and watch a movie. He comes over and we eat and then sit down on the couch to pick a movie when he says it sucks that I was on my period. Then he said he thought it was so strange that women give birth through the vagina but have periods from their butts. Oh, honey. (laughs) Oh, honey. (laughs) Parentheses. This was a completely unpromoted statement from him. And I'm still not sure how we got on that topic, to be honest, on uh, closed parentheses. I asked him what he meant by that, and he said again exactly what he said before. I kind of smiled, assuming he was very much just joking, and said, oh yeah, so weird. 
thinking he was going to start laughing soon to end the joke. He didn't, and instead started to talk about his first and only girlfriend he'd had in high school. And how... Sh- oh, here's where we get to the punchline. Does anybody want to guess why he thinks women have periods from their butts? Actually, no, don't uh, ruin it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. I have a guess. I don't know if I I'm like sure it. your guess is correct. Um <laughs> Uh, and how she used to complain about bad period poops all the time. Oh, that was not oh, my guess. Oh, what was your guess? Oh, no. <laughs> oh, honey. At this point, I ask him if he's being serious, and he looks a little confused and says he is. I asked him to explain how he came to that conclusion, and he explained that his first experience being around periods was the high school girlfriend, and before then, he'd never received or seen much information. He understood that it was something that happened inside the body and that blood came out somewhere, but assumed it came out of the vagina until he heard her complaining and realized it actually came out of the butt. It was very unexpected coming from a 22-year-old man. I somehow managed to keep my composure when I told him that periods do in fact come out of the vagina and not butts. He looked confused and then a little frustrated and started insisting to me that that was wrong and then kept saying, are you sure? Are you sure? As if I was confused about where it came out of my own body. Uh, As Matt said, her wherever. (laughs) That's a throwback. I was just going to say that's a blast from the past. Uh, I explained to him the anatomy a bit and how it worked, but he was very adamant. Eventually, he conceded that most women must have periods like that, but some, hence his ex-girlfriend, um, have their periods come from their butts. He just oh could God. not understand, no matter how many times I tried to explain it to him, that he had simply come to the wrong conclusion and misinterpreted his girlfriend's words. The whole situation became so much that I started to laugh. I was doubled over, clutching my stomach, laughing, crying, over the uh, crying, laughing over the whole debacle, and he sat there, red faced, continued continuing to argue with me. Eventually, he said he was ready to leave, and before and did so before we could watch the movie. I felt bad for laughing after he left because I could tell that that had been when he had decided to leave. And he also texted me later that night to say he had done a little bit of his own, re- a little bit of research on his own, and that he was no longer interested in pursuing any sort of relationship because he couldn't stand to be with somebody who laughed at him for not understanding. Am I the asshole? <laughs> no. <laughs> I have so many thoughts. The, the one thing that comes to mind is I don't know who said it, probably multiple people, but that thing about how, uh, like, a woman's worst fear is that a man will like kill her and a man's worst fear is that a woman will laugh at her. Oh yeah. It's like, Mm. he can't even, he can't handle. Wow. So many things. Also, I love that a bit of a failure of public education Mm -hmm. here. Definitely. As a side note, (laughs) definitely the parents whose responsibility it was to educate him did a very bad job. But, like, even if you receive abstinence-only bullshit sex education, like, shouldn't you still get basic biology? Yeah, but that kind of stuff is embarrassing for a lot of people to talk about in those circles. Because, like, why would it make any sense for you to have a period out your butt? Right, but the fact that he was on the right track at first, and then this this girlfriend changed his mind somehow. I mean, like, okay, well, how did you... How did you get so off course there, pal? Because period poops. So he thought she was pooping out her period. So she meant like clumps, like clumps no. coming out? No, no, no. Like, you know, period poops. When you poop a lot, like on your first day of your period or right before you get a period. Allison and I oh, used I to talk about them all the time, Amanda. Huh. I'm sure that shouldn't surprise you. Mm-hmm. We okay. loved a good period no, poop back mm-hmm. in the day. Um, <laughs> still do. I don't, think I, I don't think I get this <laughs> phenomenon. but Yeah, I'm not like, sure I do either. So, uh, Like, I get it, but I don't think it happens to me. It's it's like when you get constipated a few days before your period and then, like, all the hormones cause everything to relax and you, like, just have some good poops. Like, what goes up must come down. Yeah. (laughs) Google it. It's a thing. Period poops. Um, But anyway, she must have had that and – well, she did have that and this dumbass assumed that it came out the ass and – the right, because like, he didn't to, feel like, he didn't have ask any, like, follow-up questions. Yeah, to, like, change your mind so 
so completely. It's like, mm, I feel like we're missing something there. But just also yeah. like his inability to just well, I mean, if he was like 16. being wrong. Like that's, I feel like yeah. that's just yeah, so. Yeah, yeah. Because this, the person who wrote this, like she wouldn't have laughed at him so like, much if he would have just been like, oh, oh whoops, my bad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. But when you like argue against it, then yeah, you, you, no. I right. love it. Because you just become ridiculous in the fact that yeah. you just like won't. You won't see that you're wrong. I, you're going to explain to somebody who gets a period that actually her period comes out her butt. Or they're like, no. oh, well, okay, well, then maybe some women it comes out. But, but like, there's definitely right. some women. Like, I'm, de- <laughs> I'm still no. definitely, like, partial. I'm, like, not completely wrong. Like, I'm still right. a bit right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No. I mean, she was no. special. She had it come out her butt, but <laughs> but I just it, and then he kept insisting that she was wrong until he did his own research. Well, exactly, which I'm yeah. sure was like a, he got it like you know a men's <laughs> can, magazine. Can you imagine what now that he's googled where does period come out of? What his fucking targeted ads are going to be? <laughs> he's getting <laughs> he's getting things. And butt plugs, like, nonstop right now. <laughs> Does the period so come out of your butt? <laughs> we should be like, dude, think about it. If you're bleeding out of your butt, you're bleeding internally, Nothing. and you need to go to the hospital. Yeah. Good. But, like, he was right there. He said, like, the first thing, like, it's weird that women give birth <laughs> out of their vagina, but bleed out of the... It's like, you got this. Put, the, right. put those two together. What does a period do? Like, what's... Or what is it? signify that you're yeah, um, that's why that. i'm telling you it's not just the period poops because it's like to be so certain to just, yeah. like change your mind from what like logically makes yeah sense i don't know based on one comment because the thing is yeah. like if his ex-girlfriend made that comment it's not like he followed up with oh are you saying that your period comes out your butt and that she then said <laughs> yes and so it does for all people who have periods no it was like he just Assume he just made that assumption and then right. and then went with it. <laughs> wow! I just yeah, I just don't understand how you get you just you change your mind that quickly from just that one little <laughs> kernel of information. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I died. cannot. So yeah, from uh, from now on, every every couple of weeks, I'm gonna find a new "Am I the asshole?" I love, I love it. it. Also, I love Matt's comment. That young man, Brett Kavanaugh. Yes. <laughs> yeah. But at least now we know what uh, the wherever of blood coming out of here, wherever is. The butt. Yeah. At least we have. It's yeah. not her anus. <laughs> oh, good times. All right. Let's <sighs> move on to some feedback. But in the meantime, let's take a quick commercial break. The first, uh, let's see, do we have feedback? Everybody's been very quiet lately. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Comment on them Facebook posts. Um, <laughs> anyway, all right. Matt's what she said. <laughs> <laughs> all right. It's really enjoyable. I appreciate it. We had a quarter inch outside. We were doing something in the elevator. Mm. <laughs> Once he got started, he just kind of felt like he had to finish it. It's fair. However you want to get it to us. We can do it again on 3333. <laughs> <laughs> Which we need to talk about when we're done here. <laughs> I'm sorry I didn't get in. So I'm jumping back in. <laughs> How's your butt? <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> it's not his period, but <laughs> it's already activated. He put a lot of work in it. <laughs> um, speaking of three, three, thirty, three. We had talked about last week, 2222. Are there any updates on that? Or It's uh, looking like the festival is still happening. Okay. And so I think I might buy my ticket tomorrow. Okay. Cool. Um, 
Yeah. And I know I promised last time that I would take a mic with me, but then I was like thinking about it like at 7 p.m. It's, it's like fine. prime doing stuff time. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's okay. <laughs> just my happiness. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> Okay, let me think about it. I'm just kidding. I'm only slightly kidding. I'm just kidding. I know. I know. It's like if we could record in the morning, then that'd be great. But like 7 p.m. Honestly. You know when you're on vacation, like what? Who knows what I'm going to be doing at 7 p.m.? It's fine, I promise. (laughs) We'll figure something else out. Who knows what I'm going to be doing at 7 p.m., but I'll probably be in the, like, downtown in the bars. Cool. Well, that'll be fun. That'll be what fun. else would I be doing in Missoula at 7 p.m.? <laughs> There's That's other things, point. but I mean. Cool. <laughs> I had scrolled down I had scrolled down this thread and somebody explained what period poops are. Which period poops, the definition is different than what I have experienced. So oh. it's when you're cramping real bad and it causes your intestines to cramp, which promotes diarrhea. Pro- or prompts diarrhea. Huh. Huh. Yeah. I have never heard of this. No, I, I haven't either. I mean, I wonder though, because I take birth control and that mitigates some of like the PMS. Symptoms, I guess. So. I mean, I I thought period poops was something totally different in my experience. <laughs> I thought you meant like clumping when like a big clump comes out. <laughs> it's kind of like a poop. No. No. Yes. Yeah, nope. Nope. Good times. Oh, have you guys seen, sorry, Uh, let's do the Andy update, and then I'll say what I was going to say. Okay, we have an email from Andy. Okay, Andy writes in, another frustrating week in Andy's virginity. Hey, broads, I'm really at a loss with this update. As you can expect, no news on the dating front. All the pandemic stuff has really dulled my motivation to go out looking. I've started a little bit of job hunting because I really should think about moving on. It's a bad habit of mine to stay at a job for many years beyond what I should. For example, I was hoping my current job would last two to three years before I found something else. We passed six years this fall. It goes fast. Uh, Yeah, some of that loss can be chalked up to the pandemic robbing all of us of all this time putting the status quo on hold. Thankfully, Mm -hmm. there was a respite for a while last year. But now it's hot again, and I'm just so tired of it. While I am grateful that somehow I still haven't gotten sick, I'm still, it's still so exciting. uh, Sorry, it's still so exhausting dealing with this for two full years while people guided by sociopaths continue to drag this on. Sorry, this is a little more rant heavy than usual. I just don't have anything to report, and this crisis is a big reason for that. Then again, I know I'm not alone in this frustration of wanting to scream at these people but knowing that won't do anything. Unfortunately, that's the closest to an uplift this week, but I think it is enough. I guess it has to be in this era of making the best of what we've been dealt. I just like to be able to give you guys something nice in the way of news as we head to the end of the fifth year of me writing this. I guess there's always year six. Hashtag I'm with hers, Andy. Let's not make it year six. We're going to do this. (laughs) Indeed. We're going to do this. Omicron is peaking. Things are going to hopefully start It is to get peaking. Better. And you hopefully. know something? We are creeping towards endemic territory and then learning to live with it because we do have better ways to treat it. It's evolving into something, uh, mutating into something that, you know, as like the same trajectory that the 1918 flu took where it's more mm-hmm. contagious but less deadly. Um, so uh, I'm hopeful. Tentatively. Yeah. The Daily yeah. this morning was very interesting. Mm. Yeah. Is this the one called We Need to Talk About COVID? Yes. Okay. I downloaded it. Thing. Okay. Oops, sorry. It's essentially what they like broke it down. It's like as we can't move into the endemic phase until like both sides kind of ease up a little bit where that like conservatives are – like underplaying the pandemic Mm. and Democrats are sort of over overplaying Mm. that. It's like, we have all these things to make, make the threat a little, you know, much less and it's Mm -hmm. still too much of a risk. Right. For, you know, for, um, 
for Democrats. And so like, Mm -hmm. we have these, you know, as, as we all know, in all things, we have these two very polarized sides of just about every argument in this country. And that, you know, they're sort of saying that, like, nobody is like, completely on the moral ground. It was just like a very interesting way to frame it, you know, like when you're like, so set, and it's sort of like something just kind of like, oh, huh. It just, it very much made me, made me think, and it laid out information. um, And just the facts, the statistics about how like polling and stuff, it was just very illuminating. I thought it was very, very interesting. The one thing- I will have to take a listen. I truly, truly, like, I'm so frustrated that it had to be politicized. Like- Yeah. Yeah. Because it it didn't have to be, and it was, and it got even worse- once Biden took office and, you know, the the powers that be on the right decided that they were, you know, risk assessment, like, you know, eh, let's kill a few uh, few listeners, viewers uh, in order to prove our point or whatever. Like, it's just it's so frustrating. There was this um, and, and like two things from that. Like, so it's it's frustrating because, like, on the one hand, yes, is it's not as bad but like even anecdotally like it's not like you're guaranteed to not get really sick and that's still scary because even like anecdotally like in my own life so i was fortunate enough to you know i had family members pass away actually today is the one year anniversary of my aunt's mother passing away from covid last year Um, Mm -hmm. my dad lost two of his cousins last December, right before Christmas. Um, my, uh, my grandma, uh, her friend's husband. So, you know, who's in like his eighties, he passed away and then her son-in-law passed away. And like that friend and her husband, they were very close with my parents, like with, um, you know, my mom's family, like, you know, when they were younger and like, they helped my grandpa when he had cancer. So, you know, everybody's very upset when he passed away. And then the son-in-law passed away and like, you know, we've known people who have died. And um, then I went through a long stretch where I didn't. And it's almost like, you know, everybody kind of forgot like how bad it could be or whatever. Um, And then my whole family got it at Christmas time. And, Mm -hmm. you know, my parents thankfully did not get it, did not get bad case. They just were very, very exhausted. Um, you know, my grandma's sister got it. She was very exhausted, but she was fully vaccine boosted, so she was okay. Mm. Yeah. Um, but my aunt, oh, oh, my niece and nephew got it, and they were okay because they're younger, even though they're not a vaccination mm-hmm. age. But my sister got it, and she lost her taste, smell, and had an ear infection so bad that she couldn't hear out of her left ear for a while. It took the full 10 oh. days of the antibiotics they gave her for the ear infection to have it not hurt like she was dizzy and uncomfortable for like a while Mm -hmm. so like she had it and even that you know it's moderate but that's not anything to like go to the hospital over or whatever but then my aunt had it so bad that she still has like covid brain and says that this this Mm -hmm. week now a month later is like she had the flu-like symptoms for like five or six days right and like she had it pretty you know pretty significantly and um, you know, she asked, you know, she, I was talking to her last Wednesday when I said, oh, or Thursday or whatever day it was when I told her that Jay was positive. And she said, oh my God, I thought I was having like early onset dementia because the brain fog is so bad still. And wow. so when I talked to her yesterday, cause she asked how Jay and Zach were, I said, they're much better. How are you feeling? And she goes, oh, I feel so much better. Like the week has made the difference, but like, she's like, she still was getting headaches. She still had a cough. And it was about a month later. She she tested positive on, like, December 27th or something like that. Um, so, you know, you just hear, like, yeah, it could be great. But, like, and then on Jay's, Jay's side of the family, like, you know, they all have a range of different symptoms because everybody's body is different. And then uh, there was a COVID outbreak after Jay's toy show two weeks ago when we were in New York. Mm. Everybody got COVID except for Jay. And one of them had it so bad that he had something called COVID eye where his eyes got so dry that he couldn't open it. And when he got it open, it ripped his cornea because oh, they were so dry that it was stuck to it. And he's oh, still God. sick. Oh, 
and he's still oh, sick terrible. and it's like three weeks later again like you just you never know like how it's going to affect you and like yeah you might think i'm healthy but like is that really a risk that you're going to take and that's what i was getting to with all of this like i get it mm-hmm. like it's been politicized and um you know like you can make that risk assessment if you want to sure i guess but like it's selfish to put other people at risk yeah totally and i mean i agree uh, but I just think, like, if everyone would just get vaccinated and boosted, then we would be so much further along the way of, like, taking those quote-unquote risks with our other mitigating factors, you know, that we have, right. like, masks and whatnot. Right. And that that was ultimately, like, the the conclusion of where they came to, that it's sort of like if everyone got vaccinated and boosted and everyone, like, everyone could accept a little more risk because they're... Mm-hmm. Like when we have all those things, when we are vaccinated, boosted, and yeah. we have the proper masks, like your yeah. your risk of getting COVID is exceptionally low. Yeah. yeah. And so that's sort of like what they were ultimately saying that like everyone's yeah. got to have to kind of. But they're not going come to. closer together. And that's and I think that's ultimately the thing that like, it's like the all... people that would benefit from hearing this information. Right. Are not the ones that are going to hear it. Which, right. They don't listen to the really, daily. <laughs> right. Which is really the issue we've just been having. They're turning in on every Trump. way for, you yeah. know, they're literally turning on Trump because he's telling people to get vaccinated mm-hmm. and boosted. It's mm-hmm. crazy. Whoa. Like, is that a hill you really want to die on? Yes, I guess it is. We've got our Whoa. answer. Yeah, it is. But yeah. like speaking yeah. of yeah. dying to own the libs, there's a story going around today of a man who needed a heart. He needs a heart transplant. And you know how you heard that, right? He, they said, like, I saw the headline, be fully vaccinated with a headline so misleading. You have to be fully vaccinated, including your COVID booster. And he's a fucking MAGA whatever and refuses to get it. So he's not going to get his heart transplant. So he's going to die. And he has two kids (laughs) with a third on the way. And like the right, they're like, they're all like, you know, life and blah 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 and like how dare you the hospital system letting this man die and it's like no we don't have enough no, organs no, no, no. getting an organ transplant is a fucking privilege and if you're yes. not going to go through and there are other things other questions they ask you yeah. about your lifestyle and shit like exactly hand out you know right they don't just hand out, right. organs, they don't just so hand out a heart. heart you get a heart <laughs> Like, it's, it's like, it's a really big deal. Like, you're okay yeah. with the doctor going, so this doctor is going to literally put a dead person's heart into your body, and you're okay with that. But that same doctor is telling you to get right. vaccinated, and you're not okay with right. that. Like, there's right. a cognitive mm-hmm. dissonance failure going oh, on. Oh, yeah. There. Oh, <laughs> yep. absolutely. Yep, yep, yep. Like, you're okay with all of the medications that they're going to give you and you're going to have to be on forever to make sure your body doesn't reject that heart, but you're still not right. okay with the COVID but vaccine. But the COVID <laughs> vaccine, hmm, that's where we draw the line. Uh, uh, yeah. It's, not it's like somebody, enough. again, like somebody died and and gifted their heart to science. You are getting, it's like, that's a huge deal. Somebody died. Hey. And so you have to, do your best to make sure that that heart doesn't just like go to waste. Yeah. Right? You have to deserve that heart. And they want to make sure that you deserve that heart. Like you're not. And a- if you're just going to play like fast and loose with your life for stupid well, fucking also, reasons, like, not get a, not get a COVID vaccine, then like. Then there's somebody the behind you who wants to play by the rules, who wants to live. Yeah. Like, I'm sorry, but that's literally the definition of dying to own the libs. And that is so sad oh. and so stupid. And his poor children that are not going to know their father because yep. he yep. won't do the basic thing. And, like, I'm sorry, but, like, you're just entitled at that point. And, I'm, I, mm-hmm. again, like, I feel for you that you need a new heart. But, like, it's not like you're adopting a fucking cat. You're getting a f- new heart. Yeah. Also, what a poor yeah. example to be setting for those children. Yeah. And I'm sure that when those kids grow up, the mother will scream about how the corrupt hospital system run by the deep state killed their father. It's like... <laughs> yeah. Anyway, uh, one of the comments on that uh, Am I the Asshole thread is, I just saw someone revert a mansplaining as correctile dysfunction. <laughs> <laughs> so that's pretty funny. <laughs> That's so good. That's good. All right. On that note, what a happy subject we 
<laughs> we close on that. I know, seriously. Oh, gosh. Let's just... <gasps> Hmm. Um, Want me to go back and find another good uh, environmental news? Sure. <laughs> I'll scroll through this thread real quick to see. Uh... Oh, there was also this really awesome uh, thread. Uh, the strangest interaction you've ever had with a celebrity. And um, this one woman said that she took a picture of Mark Ruffalo on the subway as he was taking a picture of her shoes and then <laughs> he posted the picture of her shoes on his Instagram, and then she Whoa. responded by posting the picture of him taking the Whoa. picture of her shoes. <laughs> That's amazing. What, that. what, how did he caption that picture? Like, why? There's no caption. The <laughs> Just, Just like, here's some shoes. <laughs> they were bright pink. They were pretty nice looking shoes. I'm not going to lie. I like them. That is cool. <laughs> Oh, my God. Okay. In 2006, at the training program at William Morris, sitting at the front desk, uh, I'm sitting at the front desk, Richard Marks comes in for a meeting. I'm totally starstruck. He asks me for gum. I don't have any. He goes to his meeting, and when he comes out, he stops at the desk and hands me gum. I died. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, speaking of singers, did you hear about how Spotify is taking Neil Young off because he criticized Joe Rogan? (laughs) Good thing I don't subscribe to Spotify because if I did, I would no longer be. That is some real bullshit. Yeah. Um, All right. On that note, I guess (laughs) we almost redeemed it. Almost. Almost. (laughs) We're so close. I mean, Joe Biden did call uh, Ducey a stupid son of a bitch, right? What a dumb son of a bitch. A stupid son of a bitch. That was a great moment. That must have felt so good. I mean... (laughs) Where is the lie? <laughs> Everybody wins in that situation. <laughs> okay, we sp- all right, we'll close on this one. There we go. One more laugh for the road. Uh, we spotted Bill Murray at our grocery store once. A few of us went to go see if it was him. He ended up noting- noticing us stalking him, ditched us, and circled around so he could step out and, scree- and scare slash surprise us, announcing, Yes, my children, it is I, Bill Murray. <laughs> hey, I have a Bill Murray story actually. Oh, go oh man, for I would it. love to hear it. Um, he comes to Carmel every year for the golf tournament um, in February. I saw him actually once at Mission Ranch, which is uh, Clint Eastwood's restaurant. But um, he, one year, I was not there uh, for this, but there's a restaurant, there's like an Italian restaurant called Vesuvio, and they have like a rooftop, a rooftop terrace. And so up on the rooftop terrace, apparently, like, he was there. And then, you know, just, like, other patrons and whatnot. Yeah. And somebody took a picture of him. And he went and, like, was like, oh, can I see the picture? And so the person, you know, handed over their phone. And he took it and threw it, like, <gasps> off the rooftop terrace into the street. It was amazing. <laughs> it was basically, like, don't take pictures. Of, you know, like. Oh, my it's, God. Uh, and then the police came, and I think he had to, you know, like, pay for the phone or whatever, which is, like, a drop in the... Bucket for him. Bucket yeah, for him. Um, but, yeah, don't take pictures of people. That's amazing. <laughs> That's a good that story. <laughs> <laughs> and we all learned a very valuable lesson right. that day. <laughs> That's- Unless they're taking pictures of your shoes, then I think that gives you permission. Yeah. <laughs> Always ask consent. Isn't that what it always comes back to? Yes. Right. Ask for consent. Um, This one person says, I was on the same flight as Carrie Fisher once. As we deplaned to the terminal, I rushed, and I was rushing to make a connection. I stage whispered as I whisked by her, I love your writing. She stopped dead in her tracks, shrugged, looked at me like I was crazy, saying, I love your reading? <laughs> All right, on that note everybody, thank you for listening. We hope that um you will send us some feedback for the Real Weird Sisters crossover episode. We are looking forward to it. Uh check out the uh Patreon bonus show if you're a patron. I think we had some good clips this week. Um, we are going to be talking about the sex lives of college girls, probably with the Real Wood Sisters. So if you have any feedback that you would like to add to that, please let us know. I know Matt had said in the chat that he's been watching the show. It's, it's so great. Um, 
So good. So we're probably definitely going to talk about that with them um, and whatever else. So let us know. Uh, Search Party, Peacemaker, the Downton Abbey. The Gilded Age. The Gilded Age. Gemstone One. (laughs) Euphoria. Not to be confused with Victoria. (laughs) Jack will be so proud. (laughs) That's from the Survivor JBC. Did he seriously get banned from Twitter? Yeah. Damn! Kudos to making... Dennis on a wonderful episode. Yes, oh, did you listen? Go back and listen? It's so funny, isn't it? <laughs> I feel bad because I just, like I know that he didn't like mean it like that, and he's so right. Like there are so many worse people. I don't have any to add to his list because I don't really do the Twitter. But yeah. I know that I know that that list is very long, and until fairly recently, Trump was on that list too. So. <laughs> How many chances did he get? Like, come on. Yeah, it's a really funny, it's a really funny episode. We're talking about uh, Dennis did a special edition um, parody, like, true crime podcast investigating when Jack got kicked off Twitter back in August um, for the dumbest thing. He basically quoted somebody and um, didn't put it in quotations, so Twitter's algorithm thought that he was threatening to kill someone, and (gasps) um, he got kicked off. Oh, no. So no he amount is, of explaining. Yeah, he's back on under a different screen name, but it's like so Twitter can take swift action when it wants to. Mm-hmm. Yeah, basically. Like for something that is clearly not a threat. It was so silly. Right. <laughs> but yeah, check it out. It's on the whole enchilada feed, the all patrons feed, and the Ramble Cast After Dark feed. It's very funny. <laughs> Thank you again, Dennis. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right. I don't think I have anything else. Nope. Nobody? All right. <laughs> All right, everybody. Thank you for listening. We appreciate it. Um, thank you to the patrons, especially the ones that contribute to a certain level, and that would be Tech from Tokyo, Eckhart Grinder, Maggie the Magnificent, Joanne with the Plan, and Ed the Creepy Poopy Head Mailman. Thank you guys so much. Um, if you'd like to become a patron, you can go to patreon.com slash Jack. Uh, any feedback, you can email us, thebroadcasters3 at gmail.com, or give us a call at 331-276-2373. Woo! On that note, my name is Colleen. My name is Amanda. And I'm Shandy. Peace out, everybody. Bye.